could be quite challenging for wheat prices. It certainly does, Gloria. Mm. And uh, the all hue, and uh, well, all hue director of advisory services at the IKO and commodities mentioned that prices may be higher in the future, but the bottom hasn't been reached yet. So it is uh, a waiting game for many of the wheat, for many of the people in the wheat market. Okay. And uh, speaking of those prices, wheat features on Chicago Board of Trade experience on significant drop, uh, hitting a five point four zero dollar per barrel, uh, the lowest level in three years actually. So although they recovered somewhere on Monday, it's clear that the pressure is still heating up. Indeed, indeed. Russian exporters are offering wheat for delivery in late October, early November, and uh, the prices are really going to be competitive, making it challenging for other wheat producers in the regions to compete. All right. So, and then moving to corn and soybeans, they've also been facing challenges. Uh, both commodities have seen their prices fall, and what could be causing this downward pressure? Well, Gloria, corn and soybeans are near multi-year laws. And uh, the U.S. government recently reported that harvests for both crops are underway, but slightly behind analyst expectations. Okay. While soybeans condition ratings improved slightly, and uh, concerns about tight supplies persist in this in this matter of fact. Actually, uh, brokers at StoneX even raised their estimates for U.S. Corn and soybean production, actually, which could further weigh on the prices. You know, it's challenging environment for farmers and traders in these markets. Absolutely, you, uh -huh. absolutely. And uh, let's not forget, Gloria, <clears throat> let's not forget uh, the global aspect of these commodities. Brazil and the U.S. are the world's largest exporters mm. of soybeans and corn. Any disruptions or shifts in their production can have a significant impact on the global market at large. Okay, and that's a great point, Victor. And uh, with Brazil's soybean planting already underway at a record pace, it adds interesting dynamic to the mix. Indeed, it does. Mm. So as we wrap up this discussion on, on agricultural commodities, it is clear that supply and demand dynamics, mm. global production and weather conditions all play crucial roles in shaping these markets. Exactly, and uh, agriculture is a complex and ever-changing sector, and it's essential for traders, investors to stay informed and adapt to these market shifts. That's for sure. Mm. Okay, thank you for joining us today as we are analyzing the agriculture sector. We'll be back with more information on gold and natural gas. We are going for a short commercial break. Thank you. No data, no problem. Zabu allows you to buy or sell securities on the Altex exchange from anywhere in Uganda via USSD. Step 1. To buy, dial star 292 hash. Step 2. Select buy. Step 3. Select the product you would like to buy, for example, bonds. Step 4. Select your preferred maturity year. Step 5. Select the bond you would like to buy. Step 6. Input an amount of 15,000 Ugandan shillings or more. Step 7. Your order has been forwarded for processing. And finally, Step 8. Your order has been confirmed. Driving business. For those who have been following Tech Byte, we have been talking about the Neuralink some months ago, and we are back to talk about the approval. Now, Elon Musk's Neuralink is recruiting patients for its first human trial. Now, what are the key points to take away from this tech bite? One is that the neurotech startup Neuralink has received approval to begin recruiting patients for its first in-human clinical trial. Two, the company is building a brain implant that aims to help patients with severe paralysis control external technologies using neural signals. Three, the initial goal of the BCI is to grant people the ability to control a computer cursor or keyboard using their thoughts alone. Now, Neuralink wrote 
this in a very big big blog post now point number four that is very key to my tech lovers is that the neurotech startup neuralink will begin recruiting patients for its first inhuman clinical trial the company announced this just in this month in a very big blog post now neuralink said that it is officially seeking patients since it has received approval from an independent institutional review board and a hospital site its next step is now to move to the market it's going to have a very very long road to the market and it comes after the startup recently receiving approval from the food and drug administration in may to conduct its first inhuman clinical study patients who participate in the trial will have to undergo invasive brain surgery Neuralink is building a brain implant that aims to help people with severe paralysis control with external technologies using only and only neural signals now what does this mean to patients who are receiving this invasive brain surgery one it means that the patients with severe degenerative diseases like the LLC could eventually regain their ability to communicate with loved ones by moving cursors and typing with their minds. Imagine someone typing with their mind. What a wonder Elon Musk has done. Now, the initial goal of BCI is to grant people the ability to control a computer cursor or keyboard using their thoughts alone. The company said in the blog post that the new link did not immediately receive respond to this, the request for the comments now interestingly as we conclude is that the new link is part of the emerging brain computer interface which centers on systems that decipher brain signals and translate them into commands for external technologies several companies have developed promising systems that they hope to bring into the market but Neuralink is perhaps the best known name in the space due to Musk himself who is the CEO of both Tesla and SpaceX. Now, as of September, no BCI company has managed to clinch the FDA's final seal of approval, but we are receiving the go-ahead to recruit for a study with human patients. Neuralink is now one step close. Goodbye, my tech lovers. Until we meet next time. Work. Jordan is magic. Jordan shines. Jordan makes his peers better. Jordan is a true leader. White Star Magic Family. Be a leader. Be magic. Say goodbye to paperwork and travel costs. Now every MTN customer can register to invest in securities anytime and anywhere with Zabu in a few simple steps. Step 1. Dial star 292 hash. Step 2. Select option 1. Register with Zabu. Step 3. Enter your full names. Step 4. Enter your national identification number. Step 5. Enter your national identification card number. In 24 hours, you will receive an SMS confirming your registration. Congratulations, you are now ready to invest. Smart 24, driving business. No data, no problem. Zabu allows you to buy or sell securities on the Altex exchange from anywhere in Uganda via USSD. Step 1. To buy, dial star 292 hash. Step 2. Select buy. 
Step 3. Select the product you would like to buy, for example, bonds. Step 4. Select your preferred maturity year. Step 5. Select the bond you would like to buy. Step 6. Input an amount of 15,000 Ugandan shillings or more. Step 7. Your order has been forwarded for processing. And finally, step 8. Your order has been confirmed. Welcome back from our short commercial break and as we promised we're coming back with more insights concerning the gold market and as you know uh, gold seems to be one of the safe haven that has been facing the tough times lately and uh, it's recently fell below around $1,820 an ounce and marking its wicked levels in seven months. Yes, the culprit behind this decline seems to be a powerful dollar and mm. soaring treasury yields. The dollar has been flexing its muscles, reaching 10 month highs against a basket of currency. Absolutely, and let's not forget that 10 year US treasury yield, which climbed up to its highest level since 2007 and all of this has been fueled by strong US economic data and which may lead to or maybe to believe that uh, the Federal Reserve is inclined to keep interest rates higher for an example of uh, an extended period. It is remarkable. This is remarkable how the economic uh, data can shape market sentiment. Mm. Uh, the recent release of the ISM manufacturing mm. PMI mm. for the US, which indicated the small contraction mm. uh, in the factory activity in nearly a year mm. of September, mm. certainly played it certainly played a role in this narrative. Exactly, exactly, and. Uh, position uh, positive economic factors and indicators often translate to expectations of tighter monetary policy and additionally the news of the u.s lawmakers uh, reached a temporary funding argument for the government that has added to a downward pressure on gold Certainly, investors are, are certainly keeping a close eye on, mm. on central bank policies and economic data. Exactly. Uh, many are eagerly waiting uh, uh, on comments from uh, various Fed officials. Exactly, this week and to gain. Uh, let's not forget the key coming up event, uh, the U.S. monthly jobs reports on Friday. That could be a market mover and significantly influence the previous methods. Yes. Market. Um, mm. Well, given all these factors, uh, what's your take on the future of gold? Do you think this is a temporary setback, or are we witnessing a, a significant shift in the, in the precious metals landscape? Actually, gold has been one of the most unique assets, and that's a really fascinating question, Victor. So, influenced by a wide range of factors, from geographical conditions to economic data, and uh, while facing headwinds, and uh, now I wouldn't count gold. As of yet, yeah, I wouldn't count it out. And it has a history of bouncing back when least expected. So oh, you never point. know. That's a fair point, Gloria. Mm. Gold's resilience is uh, part of what makes it such a captivating asset. Exactly. And uh, well, folks, this wraps up our discussion on this recent challenges facing mm. gold. Uh, we'll be keeping a close eye on how other factors evolve and how they shape the future of this precious metal. Exactly, and uh, could we talk about the rupee, the Indian rupee, because we had some insights concerning the Indian rupee, and it said that it has been under pressure. Oh yes, certainly. Mm. Um, uh, it has been under pressure due to the, the dollar, mainly. Mm -hmm. And uh, its collapse would, would not actually want to put it on the dollar, because I mean, this is how the market behaves. Mm. Uh, a currency has to go up and another has to go down. And uh, it's just market conditions that determine all of this. Okay. So um, uh, at 9, 10 a.m., the home currency was trading at 83.23 a dollar, down a 0.2 percent from its various clause. Okay. Analysts are cautious ahead of the Reserve Bank of mm. India and its monthly policy on Friday. All but right. analysts suggest that the RBI is likely to maintain its pause mm. on interest rate hikes at this meeting. Meanwhile, traders will watch the RBI's commentary amid challenges such as rising oil prices, mm. rising current and uh, account deficit and inflation. All right, that's interesting. And um, now that moves us actually to the US dollar and uh, it has been making headlines recently too. And uh, it's actually affecting the economics worldwide. All right, and it has reached its highest level this year, gaining a 6.6% 6 .6 
since May July. But what's driving the dollar's resurgence? Um, well, it's primarily the surge in mm. treasury yields okay. that's uh, bolstering the dollar. And mm. uh, the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield reached a 16-year high, okay. indicating increased confidence in the U.S. economy. Resilience. Absolutely. So investors are becoming more convinced that the Federal Reserve will keep interest higher for longer, which often strengthens it. And uh, politically popular uh, for U.S. consumers, but it's a headache for the rest of the world. That's right. That's mm. right, Gloria. Well, a strong dollar um, uh, benefits U.S. consumers by keeping import prices in check mm. and making international travel more affordable. It creates challenges mm. for other countries. Um, higher interest rates, um, uh, a robust U.S. currency and elevated oil prices can spell lower growth and increased financial vulnerability globally. Exactly. And... Uh let not forget that U.S. companies with significant overseas businesses. And uh, when you look at a strong dollar, that means a value of their overseas revenue falls when converted to U.S. currency, making their goods more expensive or for foreigners. Well, absolutely. And uh, commodities like oil uh, are typically priced in dollars. Mm. So this means that a stronger dollar can impact their prices mm. and uh, governments companies and uh, households worldwide have borrowed trillions of dollars so a rising dollar can make it more expensive to repay these debts oh really and absolutely these commodities like oil wheat are typically priced in dollars actually so which means that a stronger dollar can impact their prices and governments, companies, households worldwide, whatever, have yeah. borrowed trillions of dollars. It is actually so, a, a double, I'm sorry, it is actually a mm. double-edged sword. Um, while a strong dollar might be a, a boon for, mm. for the U.S., it can create challenges for other economies. Exactly. And, uh, particularly and this rising markets. dollar could make it really expensive to pay those debts. Exactly, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's actually been a double-edged sword, actually. And this has been born for the U.S. and it's created challenges for other economies. Well, speaking of emerging markets, uh, they've been feeling the impact of this stronger dollar currencies mm. in Latin America and Eastern Europe. Uh, they have been hit really hard. Well, central banks in uh, countries like Brazil, Poland, Hungary, which took early action to tighten monetary policy last year, are mm. now under pressure to pause or slow rate cutting plans to stabilize their currencies. Oh really? And it's a tough situation for these countries, Victor. And a stronger dollar can lead to years of economic underperformance. Yeah, if that even speak about consumption. I know and, and uh, investment, investment mm -hmm. government spending, all those come under pressure when local currencies actually weaken. Yeah, so what are central banks doing to combat this? So are, are tapping uh, some are tapping into their foreign currency reserves mm. while others are threatening intervention known as Joe boning uh, it is a clear sign of concerns that have uh, that they have about currency volatility and it's not just about emerging markets you know even countries like japan south korea have been selling foreign currency reserves for like better blows for their own currency that's right that's mm. right the impact of the dollar's strength extends far and wide it is a concern for policy makers worldwide Indeed, indeed. And many have expected the dollar to actually weaken this year as the Fed has been winding down its aggressive height hiking campaign. However, it hasn't been the case. True, true, true. Well, the global economic landscape is evolving and the dollar's strength is causing many to reassess their expectations. Mm. Some, are, some actually still believe that the dollar is, uh, the dollar's long winning stake may mm. come to an end. Mm. All right, so this, this is the factors actually to consider, Victor, and uh, like fading American growth, higher interest rates, and uh, changing consumer behavior, the dollar's recent rally could be indeed a last hurricane and been a significant decline in the year. It's an interesting perspective, actually, mm. and uh, one that will keep uh, a close eye on the mm. U.S. dollar movement. It has a profound impact on the global finance. And it's a topic we'll continue to explore within the coming weeks because we need to understand how all this will affect uh, the financial instruments as well. Exactly. And uh, more insights concerning the Fed, actually, are... Uh in a recent speech, someone called Loretta Meister, the president of the Cleveland Federal Reserve, expressed her concerns about the inflation and hinted at the possibility of other interest rate hike 
this year actually she did she did actually um uh, mester stated that inflation mm. remains too high mm. despite a slowdown in price increases since last year mm. and she even suggested that rates might need to stay high for some time to fully combat inflation that's a bold statement it really and, is. and considering fed's decision was not to raise interest rates again in september but our master's concern lies in the impact of the rising oil prices on inflation actually that's correct that's mm. correct mester pointed out that rising gasoline prices could influence consumers perceptions on mm. inflation and uh, if people start to believe that inflation will rise again mm. it could affect their behavior and spending habits and of course this comes at a time in which fed is trying to steer the economy towards its global of reducing the rate of inflation at two percent and uh, which is more in line with pre-pandemic levels that's for sure that's for sure well the fed has been on a mission mm. to quell inflation steadily raising interest rates over the past year and a half they have managed to bring down the, the annual rate of inflation from a 40-year high okay. uh, of 9.1 percent in 2022 to under 4% but the question is, how long will Fed need to keep these rates high and achieve their inflation goals? Uh, Mester mentioned the possibility of a higher for longer approach, you know, and indicating that rates may need to remain elevated on an extended period. And that's a critical point. Exactly. Borrowing costs could stay high well into 2024, which would have impl implications um, for homeowners, businesses, mm. and the overall economy. Exactly, and higher rates can help control inflation by reducing consumer spending and business investment. However, they can also slow down the economic growth rate. Well, that's a challenge the Fed is facing, Gloria. And uh, they, they want to avoid raising rates so high that mm. it triggers a recession. But they also don't want to let the inflation run rampant. Exactly, Victor, and that's a delicate balancing act if I may say, and uh, Mr. emphasize that there is considerable uncertainty around the outlook. So Gloria, I'd want to understand what are your expectations on the financial world regarding the, the Fed's future moves? Because mm. uh, do most experts foresee rate cuts in the near future? Mm. So it seems like there's a prevailing sentimental in the Fed. And uh, it's, been, it's been keeping rates uh, high for extension period to do a firm tackle on action. Well, that's the consensus, that's the consensus. But as Mester highlighted, uh, the most crucial question now is not whether an additional rate increase is needed this year, mm. but rather how long rates need to remain at a sufficiently restrictive level to achieve the Fed's goals. And that's where the challenge rises, Victor. Tightening too much could slow down the economic unnecessarily. And while tightening too a little could also lead to low inflation rates. It is a tough position for the mm. Fed, that's for sure. And uh, it's something they're grappling with as they continue to navigate these uncertain economic waters. Well, this sounds like uh, an interesting ride for the world in terms of monetary policies in the upcoming months and years, because we'll be keeping an eye out on Fed's decisions uh, concerning this and keep you updated. Absolutely. Now, that takes us to more information concerning the dollar. Well, Victor, uh, concerning the dollar, we've been stiffing our focus around, and there has been some status concerning the U.S. dollar's top reserve currency from Loretta Mester, the president of the Federal Reserve, Cleveland. Oh, well, um, um, Mester made it clear that in her view, the dollar is not at a risk of being dethroned as the world primary as the as the world's primary reserve currency mm. she made it clear because i think everyone was in the dark when it comes to this particular point well but as, since Loretta, people were like this could be dethroned any time of the year yeah and that's a powerful statement actually it underscores the enduring strength and stability of the u.s dollar uh, especially during terms of global uncertainty well, that's for sure. And the dollar has been long considered a safe haven currency mm. when international crises uh, or economic turbulence hit. And uh, investors often flock the dollar for safety because it doesn't, in my, in my perspective, it does not disappoint most of the time. Oh. Because when you're investing, you do expect losses and profit. But when it comes to the dollar, losses are there, but they're not there to destroy you. Actually, it's interesting to note that Mester emphasized the dollar's resilience and demand, even though we face the potential challenges of competitors considering the global range. 
Yeah, the status of the dollar as the world's top reserve currency isn't mm. just a matter of economic strength, actually. Mm. Um, it is also tied to global confidence in the U.S. financial system. All right. And this is a complex web of facts, actually. And uh, this contributes to the dollar supremacy, uh, including the depth and liquidity of the U.S. financial markets, uh, victim the rule of law and country's political stability. Well, what does Mester's statement mean for the future of the dollar in the global financial system? Well, Mester's remarks can be seen as reassuring for those who might have concerns about the dollar's dominance warning. It's a reminder that despite the discussion about alternative reserve currencies or digital currencies, the dollar remains the go-to choice in terms of uncertainty. That's for sure. It is a test. It is a testament of enduring strength mm. of the U.S. economy and the importance of the dollar in the global trading and finance. Okay, absolutely. And while the financial world is ever evolving, it's clear that the dollar is here to stay as a central player in the international monetary system. That's for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. And we'll wrap up this discussion with something from natural gas. So for traders who are interested in natural gas, we'll be giving you some insights concerning how it has been. And it has been a roller coaster ride, hasn't it been, Victor? That's for sure, that's for sure. Because um, natural gas prices have been quite the topic of discussion lately, just a few days ago, actually. Mm. We saw them uh, flatting uh, with the 3, three MMBTU mark dollar, and now they have retreated by 3% to 2.84 percent mmbtu wow that's impressive and fascinating so how quickly sentiment can shift from the commodity markets you know so what's driving the retirement on retreat well, the natural gas prices well gloria one significant factor seems to be the market's inability to break that three dollar barrier mm. when prices got close to that level um last week mm. but failed to surpass it triggered some additional selling as speculators became concerned that we might be stuck in the $2 range for a while. And I imagine that weather plays a role in all of this because uh, natural gas prices are influenced by weather. That's absolutely, definitely. absolutely. Mm. Weather patterns have been quite a mild recently. Mm. And uh, that's generally bearish for natural gas prices. Mm. With weak demand during the fall season and no major disruptions to mm. offshore gas production, okay. facilities despite it being the peak month of hurricane season, investors seem to be a bit hesitant. A bit hesitant about this. Okay, and you know, when you look at how it's, how it's remarkable on how these interconnected energies, you know, markets are with natural events, you know. So looking forward, Victor, how do you see this situation evolving, in your opinion? Uh, are we likely to see natural gas prices continue in its downward trend? Well, Gloria, it's always tough to make precise predictions in commodities. Mm. However, it is clear that natural gas is influenced by a delicate balance of supply and demand, and weather plays a crucial role. If we continue to see mild weather and uh, disruptions to supply, it could put further downward pressure on prices. But as we've seen before, this market can surprise us. Exactly. And the world of commodities is known for its unpredictability. You know, that's what keeps it so intriguing. And well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have more information, however, of natural gas. That's not all. Uh, what was it again? The natural gas, because um, uh, the market insights, particularly on, nat on natural gas, are wide because, as we said, the market is for sure worrying investors. But just to keep you confident about it, it is not going to disappoint. And one key reason that we talked about is weather. So when we're looking at weather forecasts for the next couple of weeks and into the upcoming winter, you see natural gas demand actually is highly weather dependent. And when we have mild low weather, it often translates to low demand of natural yes, gas. Yes, and uh, one key reason is weather, uh, as weather, we are looking at milder weather forecasts for the next couple of weeks mm. and into the upcoming winter. So obviously we need to keep, we need, they need to keep it at that point for now to see how it goes. Because um, another factor to consider with mm. the widow maker spread 
um, which is the premium of uh, March 2024 futures mm. over April 2024. Mm. It is called the widow maker because it can lead to rapid price moves that have affected speculators in the past. Exactly. But a smaller March premium typically suggests expectations of an easier or milder winter. Mm. We will just see how it goes because weather is also with predictions. So this actually translates to a low demand. Yes. Yeah, and it seems like weather forecasts are crucial on the world of natural gas. But what else is contributing to the drop in prices, actually? Exactly. But fascinating terminology, Gloria. Um, mm. it, it really highlights the, the unique dynamics of this market. Mm. But what's causing this spread to shrink? What's causing the spread to shrink? Actually, uh, another factor to consider is the window maker, the window maker spread, you know, which is the premium of March 2024 futures. But um, don't you think it is largely driven by the increasing likelihood of a, of a mild El Nino winter? Mm. You know, it's, encouraged, it's an encouraged speculation. Uh, we might be able in uh, not just for the mild winter, but also lower prices extending to 2024. Yes, uh, Actually, all the way to March, I feel like it is kind of a, a big matter of discussion because March is a little too far. And this mild return will actually reduce the amount of gas utilities up from the storage during the heating season. Exactly. Exactly, and leaving more in storage for the next year. That's a crucial insight, Gloria. It, it, it shows how interconnected uh, storage, weather, and pricing can be. Mm. Now, let's talk about uh, supply and demand. Are, are, they, are there any notable trends in these areas that, that, that are impacting natural gas prices? The supply and demand chains are completely robust, trust me. And uh, we have a slight decline in the natural gas output in the lower 48 US states. And primarily, data suggests that a three-month low in daily output, actually. So despite strong exports to Mexico and increased flow to LNG export plants, okay. mm -hmm, this decline has made an impact. It, it is incredible how even a, a slight shift uh, in supply can affect the markets. Looking ahead, what are the forecasts uh, telling us about the natural gas demand? Well, the forecasts indicate a transition from the warmer than normal weather uh, to mostly near normal conditions. With the milder weather ahead, demand is expected to slide a bit. So pipeline actually exports to Mexico have hit records, uh, but some plants are undergoing maintenance. And we anticipate more gas going to LNG export plants, especially in the upcoming projects. Okay. the new fortress energies that's for sure so despite the recent dip in prices mm. uh, the future still holds some potential for growth in the lng sector it is an exciting time for the industry that's for sure absolutely a natural gas market is always full of surprises and opportunities we'll be keeping a close eye on these factors as they evolve well, folks, that wraps up our discussion on the recent drop in natural gas prices. We hope you found it very insightful. Stay tuned in. for all our all other insights on natural gas and particularly other products and commodities as we continue to bring them for your enjoyment and for your education. Yes, and thank you for joining us today. While we give you this insightful information, my name is Nampi Glara, together with Victor Chiberu. Yes, and this marks our end of today's episode on financial markets, where we unpack the latest trends shaping the financial world. So stay tuned and keep up for other programs. Thank you. No data, no problem. Zabu allows you to buy or sell securities on the Altex exchange from anywhere in Uganda via USSD. Step 1. To buy. Dial star 292 hash. Step 2. Select buy. Step 3.